Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet of Jamaica. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you, we cherish you, Father. Please help us. Please help us all, all of us as a whole, have something we can get better with you. And uh, I pray that this sermon will minister all of us, that we, we will gain ground with you, and that we will not fear the wicked things of this world anymore, but that we'll have the reverency of God, of you, in our hearts, but acknowledging that you're Father. And you got a little soft side, but you like to show a little bit more of the stern side so that we as your kids will, will go unto you so you can bless us that much more because we willingly go to that stern daddy that loves us very much and do anything for us. It's just we got to we got to turn that key and open that door of our hearts and say, Father God, fill us full of your Rukadash. Uh, the spirit of Jesus in our hearts and our minds today. And I thank you, Father, and praise you. Amen. Okay, today's sermon is called Remove Worldly Ways. Remove Worldly Ways. Okay, and so we're going to go to Psalms, to Helam 119, 33 through 40. 33 of 40 of 119 of Psalms, to Helam in Hebrew. And we're going uh, through uh, the al uh, in the alphabet of this. Hi. Teach me, Yahweh, the ways of your laws. Keep them, keeping them will be its own reward. So when we keep God's ways, God's laws, there's a reward within them, okay, that we receive. Give me understanding, and then I will keep your Torah. Torah means Torah means not only law. That's actually the secondary word. I don't know why they, but it means good teachings, good teachings, and then of course law that a lot of people know. But it's a pure law. It's, it's God's law. God knows everything in the first place, so His laws don't need to be changed ever. It just needs to be maybe thought in a different way as we grow and and in love with God and and realize then that these laws are from God not from a human being that's unperfect like a politician or even sometimes what leaders do unintentionally um, but politicians do it purposely of course there's a difference between a politician and a leader by the way and people are buffaloed and thinking they're the same thing and they're not so the, let's continue I will keep your Torah, and I will uh, observe it with my all my heart. So if you don't observe God's laws from Genesis to Revelations with all your heart and soul, Almighty, if you don't understand it with your heart and this your mind, you're not going to understand it. you got to understand it with your heart as well. Because the heart of God is his ways. It's, it's, it's his heart as a father teaching us his holy ways. Amen. And I will observe in with all my heart. We're going to be all our heart in this word from Genesis to Revelation. We have to say, yes, my heart. And sometimes you got to get yourself and say, yes, self, my heart, my mind, it's going to be all in with God, with God's word and who he is his father as king, savior, Lord of lords. The Holy of Holies, the Father of Lights. Amen. Many other titles too. Guide me on the path of mitzvah. Mitzvah is holy rulings. His holy rulings. His holy doings that he wants to do in us. For I take pleasure in it. So it's not enough to have a lot of love for God's ways and to be do, doing his holy doings, but take pleasure in it. That means our attitude has to be all the way in there with, with what God wants. Bend my heart towards your instructions. So God is, is, is directing our hearts to his ways, his instructions. And not turn selfish gain. That means our flesh taking over and, and our flesh 
doing things it should not be doing. See, our, our soul and our flesh is supposed to be commanded over by our born-again spirit, and our born-again spirit is supposed to be led by Jesus' spirit, Yahweh's spirit, and through that, seeing the eternal holiness that Yahweh has for all of us. Amen. Fulfill your promise, which you have made to your servant, which you have made to those who reverent you. Reverent who? Who's the you? It's the Messiah, of course. It's the word of God. It's referring to the more intimacy of God here. Avide your disgrace with the dread, for your ruins are good. See how I long for your precepts and the righteousness that gives me life. And so the uh, the others try to disgrace with a dread, but you know it's that. But God's ruins are good. So that's again you you think of Paul, you know. And how Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh and God's grace was sufficient for him. That's the same way it's saying here. When others are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, that are under control of the false gods of Baal, and not the true God of Yahweh, and, and they don't they can't see clearly and they're clouded in their minds. And so they're gonna they but God's goodness rules overrules those things, amen. So let's remove the worldly ways from us. And what religiousness says, worldly ways, and what God's word actually says about it is two different things. Because God, according to the person, he tailors certain things. And other times it's it's a it's something that we have to think in on a, a, a bigger spectrum as well. Let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 9, I mean, 17 through 24, 17 to 24 of four Ephesians. Let's head over there. And it says, Therefore I say this, indeed in union with Yahweh, I and stand it on it. Do not live no, any longer like the pagans live. Uh, with their steering ways of thinking, sterile ways of thinking. Uh, their intelligence has been shrouded in darkness, and they are esteemed from the life of God because of their arrogance in them, which turns and turns and comes from the resistance of God's will. And they have lost all feeling, so that they ab abandon themselves and uh, and intensiveness and practices of kind of impurities and always greedy for more. But this is not the lesson and you learn from the Messiah. If you really learn, listen to him, him meaning the Messiah, the Word of God, and were instructed by the Messiah, the Word of God, then you learn that since what is in Yeshua is truth, amen. So you want truth, you got to get it through Yeshua. That's what it's saying. Because we read in reverse, you always, this is how holy the Bible is. You can read the Bible in reverse and you can get the same thing you just read forwardly, but sometimes you get a, another more deeper impact. So the truth is Yeshua. Yeshua is the truth. The truth is Yeshua. And throughout the Bible, it's this way. Amen. And you get the deeper revelation that has already forwardly been shown. This is because this book is a holy book. This book was uh, orchestrated by God's own heart to whoever he deemed worthy to write these things that we, we, we know throughout the Bible. Amen. Okay. Which, but this is not the lesson you learn from the Messiah if you really listen to the Messiah, the Word of God, and were instructed by the Messiah, the Word of God, then you learn that since the, the Yeshua is truth, 
the truth is Yeshua, then so far as you form a ways of life, the life of the ways of the former, you see that, is con uh, considered, you must strip off all the old nature, nature of all you off stripped, you stripped off. Because your old nature is thoroughly rotten by the deception desires. And you must let your spirit and your mind keep be being renewed. We gotta keep renewing. What's another word of renewing? Well, it's a cleansing, right? It's also a confessing to 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 the Father God. And so renewing. And it also down the line, it would it, doing these things. What do you get? Re revival in your heart and mind, and and clothe yourself with the new nature created by Godly, uh, with especially itself in righteousness and holiness, and righteousness and holiness that flows from the truth. And we know who the truth is. It's it stems right back to Yeshua, Jesus, the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of God. Truth from flowing that the holiness and righteousness that in itself presses it being kept minus spirit, letting a must in you. Amen. That's the reverse on that. But it's it's plainly saying that we, if we we need to allow God's truth to help the new nature that God is instilling in us, and that worldly ways of the old nature will go and dim until it's finally gone, until the Lord comes. Amen. I think everybody has a tiny little struggle somewhere. Just be honest. But God's new nature in us will overturmine those things as we trust and we seek the truth, Yeshua being the truth. And because Yeshua is the truth and we understand that Yeshua is the Messiah, but also that he's the word of God, that every word in this Bible was g given to us through Yeshua, the Messiah. And so the words of life need to be brought deep in our hearts and our minds. Our beautiful minds and hearts that God wants to, to develop and make beautiful things happen in there. Amen. Let's continue with Proverbs, Mishalim, chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. 5 through 8 of 3 of Proverbs. That's where we're headed. Proverbs. Amen. Okay, and it says, trust in Yahweh. Amen. There's a lot about trusting in the Bible. And it's 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 God's ways that we gotta trust. We gotta trust that Father God has the best for his kids, which is all of us, for his kids. That he has the best. Just like you learn the learning curve when you're a child growing up, that you gotta learn to trust daddy. And you know mommy too, but daddy. Learning to trust daddy. Because we don't trust the daddy. There's some problems going on. And uh, they, 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 they pass away in a lot of different things that we don't want to go there. Because if you, if you have a really good, loving, stern daddy, you're going to find out real quickly that you should have did it. And, and hopefully you're going to have the learning curve to do what is best. Because, you know, a real dad is going to look after their children, you know. And just like God is... The real father of fathers, of all things, father of lights. And he has the best for all of us. Amen. Trust in Yahweh, Father, with all your heart. Put Father in there because he is Father. It might, it might bring it home to some if you just put Father in there. You know, of course he's Yahweh, but he's Father. Okay, and if we don't understand his father, we're not going to understand him, the true nature of God that he has, you know, as, as the king, the savior, 
the Lord of Lords, the Holy of Holies. We won't know any of that. And right, if we don't understand his Father of lights, that he's the Father. Trust in the Father God and Yahweh with all your hearts. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, him meaning the Messiah, the Word of God. And then all he will level your path. He means he's leveling our path. He'll level our path. He'll take the cricket out of our path. He'll take the things that are, are, are snares of the devil out of our path. If we only rely our trust in him and, re and allow him to start removing those worldly ways out of us. By trusting Father God. Amen. If, are you trusting Father God today? Amen. Don't be concerned about your own wisdom. But reverent Yahweh. Turn from evil. This will bring health to your body. When we turn from evil. It's, it's, it brings health to our body. Because evil is not God. Evil belongs to the devil. The, we must go by the righteousness of God. And this is why a lot of people have problems. Because they simply won't turn from evil ways and start doing what is good and, and, and get saved and get right with the Creator God that loves them much more than they know. This will bring health to your body. Give strength to your bones. Even your bones will be strengthened. Amen. Let's go on to Romans. Roma. Chapter 8, 1 through 8, 1 through 8 of 8 of Roman. Okay. Praise God. All right. There we are. Therefore, there is no longer any condemnation awaiting those who are in union with the Messiah Yeshua. It's when you're in union with the Messiah Yeshua, but when you're out of union with God, then, then there's condemnation in that. But if you, know, you notice, it says there's no condemnation awaiting if you're in with the union of the Messiah Yeshua that is the truth, that is the Word of God, that is our everlasting one. Amen. Why? Because the Torah of the Spirit, which produce his life in union with the Messiah. What did he just say? He says the Torah of the Spirit. That means seeing the Torah as it is. It is a spiritual thing, very deep and very spiritual in a lot of ways. Sometimes it's natural with, with the cures that doctors right now could read and understand and, and apply them and humanity would be a better place right now. But there's a lot of spiritual things that are deep, even deeper in some ways than Revelation. And, and if you read the Torah in a natural way, you're doing the same mistake that the Israelites did in the desert when 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 that was being created and down to the, the book of Judges, down to Samuel. And even in the New Testament, even then now. So we got to understand it's a spiritual books. The, the five books are very spiritual, very intensely spiritual, but they come across in a natural way sometimes. Um, as well as the revelation of, of Yeshua HaMashiach is the same way. And, and you might even throw Ezekiel in there with, with this special group of books. Amen. Which produce his life in union with the Messiah, Yeshua. Someone asked what union you are. I'm, I'm in the un, union of the Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. Okay. Because it talks a lot about union in here with God. So, you know, if, if we got a, a, a character that all they think about is unionizing everything, he said, well, I'm, I'm in my own union. I'm in the Yeshua, the Messiah's union. Jesus Christ is union. Amen. And, and has set me free from the Torah of sin, meaning that the nature of, of seeking the Torah and, and that it's it's only uh, to, to uh, get rid of sin, but it's also more, the Torah is more than that. Uh, it, that's the first layer of the Torah. And it's a natural thinking that you think when you read the Torah that it's trying to remove sin, but it's more than just removing sin. 
That's the first layer of the Torah. But it brings life. When sin is gone, what will it bring? What will it replace? Life. And that's the life of the Spirit of God. And that's why people don't go past the first level of anything in the Word of God, period. Because they won't go past that God is removing that sin. But then he's got more for our life. He's got more for our life. He's got much more. He wants to get rid of what is getting us down and wants to remove it from us so that we can get all the goodies throughout the Bible, from Torah to the revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, amen? And all those books that, that was removed, that was Torah, was part of the canon and that should be back there. Because it has it explains some of those things that are in between people's lives that should have that people need to know that you know God takes care of His own, Amen. And God wants us to reign as His His little priests and His little uh, little people that are doing good things for this whole world, Amen. God's got a plan. Are you willing to accept God's plan for your life? Are you going to keep Rejecting God's plan because God has a very beautiful plan for each of our lives. For what the Torah could not do by itself, by itself meaning by itself of, of thinking the first area. I mean, you got to unlock that to get all the blessing that the Torah or anything of the Bible has for us. Amen. Could uh because of its lack of power to make the old nature cooperate. God did by sending his own self, his son, his own self, which became a sonship, the titleship, not birth wise, but titleship, meaning we were dead and every person is dead until they get saved because he became the son, first son of for all of us, remodeled it into us when we got saved, became what we lost, we got back, amen, as sons and daughters. And that's why he came as a son, not his full self. Because if he came in his full self, we'd all be in trouble right now, let me tell you. You know, before he did this, but the next time he comes, he's coming in all his splendorness as the king. He's going from the priest to the king. Are you ready for the king to come? He, you know, and that day they were saying, they should have been saying, I'm, are we ready for the priest, a priest to come? But now we should be saying, are you ready for the king of kings to come? Amen. The lion tribe of Judah. He's, the, the lamb's turning into the lion. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, ready, ready? With a nature like our own uh, sinful one, but without sin. He's talking about God. He had a he had he had a nature like us, but without the sin in it, because he was the Spirit of God, a man, and only Spirit of God can be that way, not a natural man. That a lot of people, unfortunately, in the church are starting to believe that way, and that's wrong. That's the Antichrist way. Don't do that. Because he was the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus was, but God in the whole was a uh, one God, one Spirit, Jesus, the Spirit, and the way. But notice it's all connected. We're part of that connection because we're part of his body. And that's another way he says it. He says it in many ways. He says, I want you kids. I want you, I want you to be my kids and not the kids of, of the false gods of Baal. Don't you do that. Don't you, don't you give in to the false gods of Baal. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Amen. Don't do it. Live according to what don't don't according to what our own nature wants, but but according to what the Spirit wants. Who's the Spirit? Jesus. Jesus is the Spirit. It's a sad thing when people look on the the Messiah Yeshua, the the nature on the outside. That's not who he really was. That's the housing, the real 
Jesus on the inside, okay? And people didn't recognize that. It's because Isaiah says, the scripture says that the world wouldn't acknowledge who God really is, okay? But it's time to acknowledge who the real Jesus is. He's the Holy Spirit, amen. That's why he said that when people say he's over there, over there, no, he's the Spirit of God. He's everywhere. But there is a physicalness spiritually with the Lord, but that is a housing that he had. The Spirit of God took a housing, and and that's, but the real Jesus is the Holy Spirit. But people are are trained in a carnal nature in the churches, and so they don't they they don't explore the fact that when it says he's the Spirit, and it never says the Spirit of God leaves once once God when God was birthed. No. He was still the Holy Spirit because he was the Spirit. And it's the it's because of what Isaiah says. But you know what? It doesn't have to stay that way. People can learn the truth. That the, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Yahweh is Jesus. God did this in order to deal with sin. And in order to, to uh, uh, assume the punishment against sin and a human nature. So he came in a human nature. The Spirit of God did. So that just our, our, the remnant of the Torah might be fulfilled in this us who do not run our lives according to what the old nature wants. But according to the Spirit wants. According to Jesus wants. The Spirit of God wants. Amen. For those who identify with the old nature set their minds on things of their old nature. But those who identify with the Spirit, the Spirit, Jesus, Yahweh's Spirit, set their minds on things of the Spirit of Jesus, of the Yahweh's Spirit, amen. Having one's mind controlled by the old nature is death. But having one's mind controlled by the Spirit of life, which is Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh saves, Ab shalom. For the mind control, the, for the mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God, because it does not submit itself to God's Torah. See, we will never submit to God's Torah, good teachings throughout the Bible, starting with. The Torah, but all works all the way down to the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh's Spirit, what he spoke to John. Amen. Indeed, it cannot. Thus, those who, who identify with the old nature cannot please God. Amen. So we've got to put on that new nature, that new nature that the Spirit of God has for us. Jesus is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's continue by going to Romans. Roma, chapter 12 this time, 1 through 8. 1 through 8 of 12 of, of Romans. Okay? I exhort you, therefore, brothers and sisters. Originally it says brethren, which takes on brother and sister. But the, it's more than just brothers and sisters, right? Um, brethren is a better way. Originally it says, you know, brethren. And the view of God's mercies, offer yourself as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. Another word for set apart is holy. Living and holy for God. This will please Him. Who's Him again? The Messiah, the Word of God. The Amen. It's a logical temple worship for us. See, God deals in logic too. In other words, do not let yourself be conformed by the standards of this world. What's the standards of this world? The tree of knowledge of good and evil is the standards of this world. Amen. That that forbidden fruit that keep eating on. Instead, keep letting yourself be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of the mind of what? Why does the cross become the tree of life? The second tree of life which is wisdom and understanding and the, and the ways of what is truly of, of, of the ways of God. Amen. 
Instead, keep letting yourself be transformed with the renewing of your minds so that you will know what God wants and will agree that what he wants is good and satisfying and able to succeed. For I am telling you, every single one of you, through the grace that the limited favor that has been given to me, not to be a stack of ideas about your own importance instead of de develop sober esteem of yourself based on the standards what which God has given to each of you merely trust and you know who the trust is all about trusting in God amen for just as there are many parts of us in union with the Messiah we're in the union the, the, you're in the union of the Messiah amen all of us wonderful huh we comprise one body with each of us being uh, to the other but we have get gifts that differ which meant to us according to the grace the amendment of favor that has been given to us if the gift of prophecy prophecy is different than being a prophet okay okay if the gift of prophecy, use it to exhort and to trust. See, and they mix that up with saying that's a problem. No, it's not. This is these are the gifts of the spirit. These are not the the uh, fivefold ministry things that we say down the line. And I always say there's a there's a secret six one called coaching because we definitely need a lot of coaching in the church. You know, like a coach coaches a football team and they get them so riled up and they do it the right way, they win the game, okay? So we do need coaches too. Spiritual coaches over the church as well and synagogues. And if it is to serve, use it to serve. If you are a teacher, use it to the gift of teaching. And if you are a counselor, use it the gift to counseling and exhort. And if you are someone who gives, do it simply and generously. And if you are a position of, of a leadership, not a politician, but a leadership, lead in, with diligence and zeal. And if you are one that does mercy, do it cheerfully. Yeah. And the other thing that uh, it wasn't translated right when it says, teacher, this is right. But when it talks about teacher in the fivefold ministry, they're rabbis. They're, they're mastering of certain elements of teachings that are so deep and so well organized because it's a gift of God, amen, uh, of, of, of the fivefold ministry plus coaching, I would say, amen. But do you see how God has giftings for each one of us? And so we got to remove the worldly ways with the Spirit of God's help through God's truth that we remove the world away. It's through the truth to remove those things. It's through yielding to God and, and yielding to God's spirit, Jesus' spirit, and saying, yes, God's spirit, Jesus' spirit, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. We're so getting excited. Thank you, Father, for helping us. You know? Let's continue by going to Isaiah, delivering God. That's what Isaiah, Yeshayahu, Chapter 55, verse 6 through 10, 6 through 10 of 55 of Isaiah. Amen. So let's go over there. Praise God. And it says, Seek Yahweh while he is available. Call on him. Call on the Messiah, the word of God, while he is still nearby. This is the Spirit. The Spirit of God is Jesus. Let the wicked person abandon his ways and the evil person his thoughts. Let, let him return to Yahweh. Let he, and he will have mercy on him. Who is he again? It's the Messiah. The word of God will have, and the Messiah will have mercy on him or her. Let, let him return to our God. Let, let him or her return to God. For he will freely forgive them. And it doesn't stop there. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
For your ways are not your ways, says Yahweh. Why would he say that? Because we... We ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, so our thoughts are not that way. But because of the cross, our thoughts and heart can be God's ways again by the training and trusting in the Messiah, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's Spirit. As as the high as the sky is above the earth, are my ways higher than your ways? My thoughts are than your thoughts. For just as rain and snow falls on the sky and do not return there, but water the earth, causing it to bud and produce, giving seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return unfulfilled, but it will accomplish what I intended and cause to succeed what I sent it to do. Amen. 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 For God so loved the world, he gave his own self. His, and took it as a sonship for us. Amen. So we need to take a hold of the Spirit of God upon our lives and says, yes, we thank you, Spirit of God, what you did on the cross of Calvary. Everybody said, oh, I wish the Lord came back. He did. His Spirit sure did. He, he, he shed the, the earth suit, but he came back. A man of well. God is with us. He never let, forsake us. He never left us. He's always been here. And he always will be with us. But what is coming yet to be, which people need to be excited, and just like Second Peter says, pray for the coming of God. Return to come quicker. We, it, it is one of the things that nobody reads, that maybe we need to start reading, especially these days. Amen. Let's continue by going to Matthew, Minyahu, chapter 13, Verse 18 to 23, 18 to 23 of 13 of Matthew. But we need to be really praying for the lost souls down here because there's too many of them. Too many of them. So even though God commands us to pray for his coming to, to get here faster, he actually says that. But we need to at the same time be praying for the lost to get saved quick, quicker than that. Amen. Because we don't want people to get, you know, go to hell. We want them to go to heaven, right? So let's continue. All right. But see, the devil makes them think that they want to go to hell. No, they don't. That's the worst place you want to go. You don't want to go there. You want to get saved and you want to get a new heart and a new mind and a new, a new spirit in you. You want God to, to baptize you in, in his, his fire of his love of his spirit, but also in water symbolizing the second witness that you are really wanting to go all the way. You know, um, let's continue now. Verse 18, uh, the 23 of 13 of Matthew. Are we all there? So listen to what the parable of the sower means. Whoever, whoever hears the message about the kingdom, but does not understand it, is like a seed sown along the path. The evil one comes and sees it, but what was sown in his heart. The seed sown to, on a rocky ground is like a person who hears the message and accepts it, it with joy at once, but has no root in himself or herself. So he stays on, on for a while, but soon... The trouble and persecution rises on account of the message and, and, and immediately falls away. Now the sown sown among thorns stands for someone who hears the message, but is choked by the worries of the world and a deceitful glamour of wealth, so that it will produce nothing. However, what was sown on rich soil is the one who hears the message, understands it, and such a person will surely bear fruit. A hundred, sixty, and thirty times was sown. So even, even being on that good soil, we can produce a hundred, sixty, and thirty. That means if we're, we need to be all in it, even, even being that good soil. Putting our 
are hoeing things in that good soil of God. We need to be wanting to do 100% for God, not 60 and 30. We need to go for the 100% for God. But but God still says that's good, but it, it could be better because we could all go for that 100% with God. Amen. But if you're a new believer and you got this good soil going on and not that bad soil with the weeds and thorns or the on the bricks, you know, and you, you try to plant it in between the rocks, that won't work. We got to get that good soil. You got to get that soil that has the peat moss and, and that the good Texas soil and some of that uh, soil from Maine mix all together really good, you know, watered good and and to produce good and then put the, the holy good things of God in there, you know. But uh, we we need to be that, we need to go to that good soil, amen. A lot of us are, our hearts are not willing, but you got to get willing to, to do what is right in God's sight. Because if you don't do what God wants and you produce the wrong things, that's not good. Amen. Let's go to the last scripture, Isaiah, Shehu, chapter 12, 1b through 2. Amen. Praise God. And it says, I thank you, Yahweh. we got to thank God. When was the last time you just gave a nice prayer of thanksgiving to God? Amen. we got to do that. we got to thank our Father. How many times... Uh, does a son or daughter earthly don't they all, always give thanks when they when the father they find out what their daddy is doing is right on key well shouldn't you do that for the father god of all creation do because although you were angry with me and your anger is turned away and you are comforting me see god is my salvation Yahweh saves yeshua and I have confidence and, and unafraid, for Yah, Yahweh is my strength and my power. And when it's saying Yah, Yahweh, it's the power of God is my strength and my song. And he will become my salvation. Yahweh saves. Yeshua, amen? The Spirit of God will become our salvation through taking on the flesh of a man. Amen. In the womb of Mary. Amen. 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 So let's remove the worldly ways. And we cannot do it on our own because it's very transparent. It's through the word that we do it. It's through trusting in the Spirit of God, acknowledging who the Spirit of God is too. That's Jesus. And he took a housing of a man. Just like the Word of God actually does say, amen, that when he walked the earth, he was the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus was. But in whole God is one God, one Spirit, Jesus, and one way. Amen. Praise God. So let us, this, let's pray right now. I want to pray for the lost. But before we pray, I want to pray for those that are saved already. Father, I pray for those that are already saved. That, that, that they will not be burdened down by this, but they will take this this preaching and this lesson and these teachings and, and, and build them upon themselves and say, God's truth, God's entrusting God with all my ways. It's being a, like a lamb, a beautiful lamb that, that's full of wisdom, but it, it, it gives all that up because it loves the shepherd. We love our great shepherd, Jesus Father God, Yahweh, and we love you and cherish you. Amen. May the blessing of the Lord descend on each of you. Now, I want to pray for the lost. I want to pray for you Arabs, you Jews, you Christians that are lost in the in the ways of the world. God loves you. You know, you can have all the titles you want, but does, does that mean you're saved? Unless you really get saved in the inside. Salvation is not something you can get on the outside. It's something that starts in the inside. A lot of ministers forget to mention that. And so they got a lot of people that get sort of saved, but are they really? Because if you're really saved, you're going to struggle still, but you're going to realize it's through God's Spirit and, and trusting in God's Spirit that we get eternal life. 
and and the and eternal life comes from when when the Spirit of God had a earth suit of a man and then died on the cross, lived a perfect life, and Amen for us, each one of us, so that we can go back to the Father God Yahweh, the whole is who God is, Amen, and be part of that way. Now, Amen. God bless you. Pray this prayer and be saved. Dear God, Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. And you know what? God loves you. A lot of you Arabs, a lot of people there in the world, you never heard that. You never heard that God can actually love you. And, and, and you know, because all you heard is hate, hate, hate all your life, especially when you're Arab. You know, in some cases, my Native American friends, they, they, you always have known as, as a, an abomination of, 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 of what the government not given through on their promises, even today's world. And, and it hardens you and it makes you feel like ugly, like swamp water in you. But God is re delivering you from those things. He's making you feel better. He's realizing, you're going to realize how much God really loves you. And that the great spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus, it's going to touch your heart right now. It's going to touch your mind. It's going to remove that 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 hurt and that ickiness that was brought in there over time. And it's going to remove that. It's going to remove all that goo and that ooh out of you and make you feel good and full of joy right now. You're going to feel it right now because it's the presence of God is there. When the presence of God is there, is there's true freedom and true forgiveness. And he loves you. And, and I want you to be baptized in water now, too, symbolizing the second witness. And you can find the baptism of the earth, the first thing he ever done. Amen. It was, vo void in, it was a void, and there's water in the deep. What did he do? He water baptized the earth, first thing he ever done to the earth. He water baptized. He, he says, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to water baptize the earth. I'm going to dedicate it for my pleasures, for what I'm going to have on, on this planet. Amen. And that's what he did. And so water baptism is very biblical. It's it's very deep and it's and it's very ancient, as you can see. And and uh, people have different feelings, so don't worry. Some people might be crying, some people will standing, some people have a stern look, but because they don't want to cry on the outside of some of the guys, you know. And there, there's some that will be bowing their heads. Some of them, you don't know what they're doing, but they're doing something emotionally. And they're just all having an emotional moment in a good, holy way for you because they love you. They're, they know that you're really serious about God. And you're going to have emotions too, so get ready for them. When you get out of that water, boy, you never know what you're going to be doing. You might be crying. You might be shouting hallelujah. Who knows? But whatever it is, just be free. You know, because there's freedom in the Lord, you know. And you're going to feel like, oh, maybe for when it's just the love of God coming on you. S saying, hey, I love you. Fa your father loves you. Daddy God loves you. And that's what he's saying, you know. And and get yourself in a good word church. A church that is very family oriented. Brothers and sisters, that kind of a church. They understand that stuff. They understand that they want the world in there. Not to be worldly anymore, but to get saved, to, to help them so they don't have to have all the burdens and, and cast all those burdens before the God's throne and cross and get rid of them. Amen? But a very holy church, but at the same time, they have that giving love, not that taking love, that the false love that the world has. and Not a religious love either, but a heavenly love from God. Amen? So, God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holiness that brings peace to pass his own estate. That is seven, never broken. Complete peace of God. I leave you. Let's keep going, family. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's keep doing. Let's hit it hard. Let's hit it hard. Let's hit it long. Let's get a touchdown. And let's get them good. Let's get that touchdown. Let's get the goal. Let's get a home run. Let's get someone on base, a couple people on base. And then, and then the third man out, let's get a home run. A home run for our God, because that's the least we can do. Because he, he gave us all the equipment in this word and in and, and, and the private time that we pray for him and corporately when we pray with, for, for the Lord and how much he 
loves us and how much we love him. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord keep in us all his ways and shine upon you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Be upon you. Amen. God bless. Amen.